Hello friends, welcome to today's video where we're going to go through all the details of shiny hunting massive mass outbreaks in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So with the news that we got in the Pokemon Presents yesterday alongside Generation 9 getting announced, we also got a brand new update to Pokemon Legends Arceus in the Daybreak DLC content taking us to update 1.1.0. In this content you're going to have a brand new side quest that's available as soon as you finish the games and see the end credits. You're going to be able to take part in this where you get introduced to Mai and she's going to go through an array of different things about this new mechanic that we've now got available to us. Now massive mass outbreaks are made up of Pokemon that you're going to see in mass outbreaks as well as Pokemon that you haven't seen previously in mass outbreaks. So they're going to be different depending on the location that you go to in the Hisui region but you are going to have access to a bunch of things that we didn't have previously. This includes the starter Pokemon that are now going to be available to be hunted in the mass mass outbreaks where you can get them as shiny Pokemon. You're going to have the opportunity to get unknown and Spiritomb as well. So it makes getting these Pokemon in their shiny forms a whole lot easier. Now getting over to the first thing we want to cover is obviously the normal outbreaks that we have in a game. So if you come over to the gate at Jubilee Village, you're going to come into the map and you're going to be now presented with a brand new symbol which is this kind of question mark this indicates that there will be a massive mass outbreak in an area you're still going to have the normal mass outbreak so here we see you've got a teddy ursa and a silkoon there so if we go to the coronet highlands here i'm just going to show you this as an example because the method of shiny chain hunting the uh, the mass outbreaks is no longer a thing so what you normally do is come into a mass outbreak you normally drop a save at camp when you're here and then you'd go and check the outbreak now if there's no shinies in this outbreak what you do is reset your game and you come back to this exact point and from here you would just talk to the professor and you would head back to Jubilee Village. In the hopes of the majority of the time, you're gonna have the same outbreak appear in the same area. So normally we'd come back to the Jubilee Village, we'd go back into the map and Teddy Ursa would still be in the Coronet Highlands. But fortunately, it looks as though from the kind of early data that we've got that this has been patched out now. So you're not gonna be able to chain Pokemon anymore like we had been doing. So you're gonna almost get like a one shot at the mass outbreaks rather than having the opportunity to kind of advance the seed if a shiny Pokemon's not in that first batch, come back to Jubilife, check it again, go back in, save again, and then go and check it again to see if the shiny's in that second batch, if not reset and kind of rinse and repeat. That's not a method anymore, unfortunately, in this newest update. So if you're on the update prior to this 1.1.0, then you're still going to have access to this method. But if you have updated your games, got access to the new DLC content and massive mass outbreaks, you're no longer going to be able to kind of chain farm the uh, the mass outbreaks. As you can see, we'll do it one more time just to show you. So we would just come back to the village and then normally we'd go back into the map like i say and the teddy Ursa would be there nine times out of ten it would be there but you can see not there again we've just got different we've got a hapini over here and we've got a massive mass outbreak up in the top so that's what we've got there just to make you aware that the mass outbreaks have changed but getting on to the shiny odds of the mass outbreak and the massive mass outbreak anubis put this tweet out yesterday in regards to the kind of the data mining that we've got for the massive mass outbreak so you can see here you've got all the details going forward so not really anything has changed you've got the same odds for the mass outbreaks you're going to have the best shiny chances with those you've got the same kind of base rates and kind of boosted chances with the perfect dex, dex level 10 and the shiny charm but now we've got information about the massive mass outbreak so you can see down here a massive mass outbreak opposed to a mass outbreak it only gives you 13 rolls so you don't get that 26 rolls that you would with a mass outbreak the massive mass outbreaks minimum amount of shiny rolls is going to be 13 so the base rate is going to be about 1 in 315 if you kind of combine that with Pogodex in level 10 entry, the massive mass outbreak gets a, an additional roll. So it would give you the odds of one in 293. Then if you kind of combine that with the perfect dex entry, you're gonna get 16 rolls, uh, giving you a one in 256 chance. And then if you come down to the, which is gonna be the majority of you with a, a Pogodex entry level of 10 and the shiny charm, the massive mass outbreak at that point gives you 17 rolls. So you've got about a one in 200. 41 chance of any of those Pokemon in that massive mass outbreak being a shiny and then top of the tree is going to be the perfect decks 
entry the shiny charm and then the massive mass outbreak you're going to get a whopping 19 rolls and uh, your odds the best odds you're going to get in a massive mass outbreak are going to be one in 216 so still not bad odds but nothing really in comparison to the mass outbreaks but because of the kind of mechanics now where we can't chain the mass outbreaks, the massive mass outbreaks might be the better option for you, but don't ignore mass outbreaks. It's just, you're not gonna be able to chain them like we once were, or at least we aren't at the moment as of what we know. Right, okay, they are the shiny odds, just so you know. And if we head into game, what you wanna do when you're in the game to kind of identify whether there is a massive mass outbreak or not is like you do with the mass outbreaks, come to the gate at Jubilee Village, and then you're gonna be able to have a look at the map. And the massive mass outbreaks are the question mark icons and the normal single Pokemon are just your mass outbreaks. Like we discussed just a minute ago with the uh, odds, you know what your odds are going to be going into the different ones now at this point what i have been doing because now we know that mass outbreaks can't be chained and certainly massive mass outbreaks can't be chained so once you go into an area and come back out it's always going to despawn what was in that area initially so on that basis what i've been doing and from my testing it seemed to work out is save at jubilee village now because i did an outbreak earlier on and this was a little bit of testing. I went to the Alabaster Icelands and there was a massive mass outbreak there. There was a Riolu outbreak in this area and I went to it, I caught all of the Riolu there. There was one Lucario in this particular outbreak and it ended. Then I came back to camp. I took a note of all the natures, the levels, the stats of all of the Pokemon that I just caught, jotted them down and then reset my game, came back to Jubilife and then went back into the Alabaster Icelands and went back to the same uh, Riolu outbreak caught all the Pokemon again and then came back and checked all the Pokemon off against each other and the outbreaks were identical exactly the same amount of Pokemon exactly the same Pokemon everything was exactly the same so this leads me to think and I did this a number of times I did a licky licky outbreak and then went and caught the Riolio outbreak again and then checked them again and every time they were exactly the same Pokemon. So it doesn't look like seeds are being knocked or advanced when you catch another outbreak before a different one. It seems like the Pokemon are always gonna be the same no matter what you do, which leads me to think that as soon as you open the map, all the Pokemon are generated already on that massive mass outbreak, meaning that you can then save your game where you are in Jubilee Village, go into the massive mass outbreak, and then take advantage of it and not have to worry about timing and running out and things like that. So what I explained by timing and things like that. So if we go into, what have we got here? Okay, we've got Co Crimson Mirrorlands is a good one because we've got the starter Pokemon like Cyndaquil. We've got Spiritomb Unknown, a lot of Pokemon that you weren't able to get from outbreaks available in this area now. So as soon as we come in, you can open the map and you can see that it's populated with all of these different question marks here. Now, to get rid of the question marks, you want to find Mai. She's going to be in every single camp area, and you want to just speak to her. You want to give the Munchlax five Aguav Berries. Now, once you give the Munchlax the Aguav Berries, you're going to notice on your map, all the Pokemon are now populated. So you've got Unknown here. You've got uh, Quilava, Cyndaquil, uh, another Cyndaquil. So you've got a really nice mix of Pokemon here. So Pokemon that you would you wouldn't generally find in this area as well as pokemon you would find in this area the other things to note are the different symbols so you can see here there's a little berry above this unknown any pokemon that have this berry kind of hopping around means any Pokemon in that mass outbreak that are caught or defeated will award one Aguav Berry each time that happens. So it's a really good way to just visit that one and get back at least the five Aguav Berries you've given the Munchlax to see these Pokemon. And it also means that you can kind of stock up on them while you're out doing massive mass outbreaks. The other uh, different uh, symbol that you're going to see is as you can see here on the Cyndaquil you've got this kind of glowing circle with a star next to it now this will indicate that it probably guarantees you once this outbreak here the Cyndaquil one is being cleared out you're going to spawn another one straight after it in the same area but it's going to be likely be like alphas or evolutions of Cyndaquil or whatever Pokemon that this kind of is represented of. So in this situation, we clear out the Cyndaquils here and we'd likely see Typhlosions or Quilavas or there'd be Alpha Pokemon 
spawn straight after that. Now this doesn't mean to say that the other outbreaks here don't have a chance of spawning a second one as well. I think this probably would indicate that it guarantees it, but I did have a situation in the Colbert Coastlands where I did a Vulpix outbreak, and although it's only one situation, I would imagine it probably rings true with most of the outbreaks in each of the mass outbreaks where they do have a small chance to spawn a new kind of outbreak once they've happened so that didn't have a star or any glowing circle around it but when I cleared out the Vulpex it continued on and then spawned a new outbreak with just nine tails so there is a small chance and I don't know because it's such early days with the massive outbreaks what chances they are now there are two ways to approach going about the massive mass outbreaks now there is the quick way where you can just do a flyby of all the Pokemon in the area you can literally just go from Pachirisu to Bonsley to Skorupi over to Anon and then down to Bonsley and then the Carnivine, etc, etc, etc. Just doing a flyby, check the first four Pokemon in each of those outbreaks and see if they're shiny or not. Uh, and then if they're not, just move on to the next one and then kind of continue until you get all the way around the map. Now, this is kind of indicative because from all of the massive mass outbreaks that I've done, I kind of figured it worked out the same across the board. It, appears as though they last for about eight minutes now if you've got your map open or if you are in a battle or if you are talking to an npc or in a battle with an npc like one of the misfortune uh, trio the timer seems to stop when you're doing any of those things and then continue when you come out of it so but roughly speaking every single mass outbreak massive mass outbreak they have done it looks as though they run for about eight minutes so that would give you enough time to do a flyby of the entire area check the pokemon and see if there are any shinies in the first four but there is another thing to mention. I think because we are saving a Jubilee village and we know that the Lucario that spawned from our initial findings were always the same, it means that we don't need to worry about the timer. We can then come into game and rather than just do the flybys and potentially miss Pokemon, we can go into, say, the Swinub outbreak here. Clear it out. Clear it out. Don't worry about the timer. Clear it out. If there's no shiny move on Pachirisu clear it out then do the same with the Bonsley and then if you get to Skorupi it's probably going to be time for the outbreak to finish now at that point you've missed all of these other Pokemon in this massive outbreak but you can just reset your game go back to Jubilee Village and then come back into this massive mass outbreak and then ignore the Pokemon that you've already cleared out knowing that there's no shinies in there and then start with Anon and then move down to Carnivine, move down to Quilava, and then to the Cyndaquil, and then kind of just rinse and repeat that until you've done all of the Pokemon in the entire area, and then you'll be able to know undoubtedly that you've got all of the sh I'll check that you've got, you know, that there's no shinies there. And the other thing is, if there's no shinies there, then you can just reset, go back to Jubilife, and you haven't wasted any resources. One of the things about the massive uh, mass outbreaks is they are super resource heavy. You're going to use a lot of Ultra Balls, Jet Balls, your Sticky Globs and so on so it, it means that your resources are getting really depleted and especially if you're not getting a shiny or anything like that it's not really worth it unless you're after a particular alpha or a different pokemon that has spawned in so they're the different ways to do it like i say you can just take your time with it you can go back and forwards obviously catching the pokemon if you're catching them is four rather than catching them individually or defeating them is four rather than catching them or defeating them individually then it is going to generate different spawns in the different outbreaks like it did with the mass outbreaks so depending on how you approach the outbreaks it will generate different pokemon but if you're going to keep to a concise kind of way about doing it and just catch everything or defeat everything one by one then you know you're going deeper into the each outbreak and you're checking thoroughly that there's either shinies there or there's not shinies there if you get what i mean so that's a way to do it we are going to check our quilavas here because i am definitely after the shiny start as i already got an oshawa when i was in the alabaster icelands earlier on today doing a bit of testing with this so i was very fortunate flew by and it was in one of the first four uh pokemon that appeared uh, so i was very lucky to get that and i'm hoping i can get that kind of the set as well so uh rowlet and syndical are next so we'll check the syndical now 
and um, then we can check the Quilava and I think there's a second Cyndaquil but we'll come to this one first because it looks like it's got a chance of uh, going again once we clear this initial one out so if we'll just listen out as we come over oh we got a shiny no way it's actually a shiny okay uh, right okay so what you can do at this point you can save yourself a bit of time and this is why the flyby is a good method but also checking deeper into the dens is good see if we can nab that one and we don't need to worry about the other ones which is pretty exciting so Oh, we got it. Okay, that is epic. That is epic. So what you can do now is just leave this one or we could continue on with it. Um, and just to show you that it, they are the same every time. What I'm going to do is just reset my game now because we know there is a shiny there. So this is what I mean about checking the dens and clearing them out or just flying by them. And if you miss any, don't worry, just reset your game, come back into it because you're gonna be able to go back in and the Pokemon are always gonna be the same every time you go into that set massive mass outbreak. So you don't need to worry about it. Don't need to worry about the time or anything like that. Now, I think we'll still find information out that will probably streamline this whole process there'll probably be information that comes out and different ways to approach a massive mass outbreak but we're so early on at the minute this is the definitely from my findings the best kind of way i've i've had success with the massive mass outbreaks checking everything and then you know not wasting too many resources so we'll come back in again you can see you know if you take a screen cap as well of the map when you first come into it when you've activated the five of guava berries then you don't need to bother doing it the second time when you come in so you could potentially just come over here speak to this to my give the munchlax the five berries and then when you've got the map here just take a screenshot of it like and then just refer back to that rather than doing anything else but you can see we've got exactly the same pokemon again as we did the last time so what we want to do on a map is just mark this Cyndaquil and we want to make our way down over to this area okay we're getting very close now and we need to listen out as we'll swoop down in just a second and we should be on top of the outbreak right now oh not quite and there we go okay, there it is it is a shiny still so there you can see it is shiny again it hasn't changed it's exactly the same as it was and kind of proving that I think everything is spawned as you as it as, as it is stamped on the map as you open that map in Jubilife Village. So there you can see that the uh, we got the shiny again, and we don't really necessarily need to worry about clearing it out, although we can do, and we can just make our way around the rest of them. But like I say, this is this this saves you having to rush through and just look at the four four pokemon you can then go deeper and deeper and deeper into the outbreaks to see about making sure that there's no shinies that you're missing by clearing everything out and just resetting your game and kind of coming back to it so um this is one way to do it and i hope this is helpful for you like we're going to find more information out as we go through um you know doing more of these but actually there was the um the, the shiny oshawa as well that i had but we'll just pop you down for now because you are great my little friend and uh, that is our nice syndical there so i just need the third one now to to kind of get the three but like this area is brilliant so you can get a bunch of different pokemon here you can get the um the syndical obviously we can go back clear that out and then go and work our way around the rest of the area before we finish up with this one and like i say if there was no shiny in this area then what you could do is just finish it up clear it all out know that there's no shiny in any of the outbreaks and then just reset your game you've got all your resources back all your dive balls all your sticky globs everything like that you've not wasted anything and then you can just reset the massive mass outbreak and find a new one and then save and start again and you know that everything is going to be there and you can take your time with it and you're not going to lose anything so friends i hope you found this useful obviously like i say there'll be more information more data coming out in the weeks to come i'm sure about it and if we do have a more streamlined method then i will update you as soon as i can please let me know because we are at the early stages of these massive mass outbreaks if you've got your own findings it would be great to hear about them down below in the comment section and it'll help us collate as a community and get the best method out there for you all to kind of start shiny hunting in the best possible way so thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode i hope you're having fun with the new 
DLC excited about Gen 9 and I will see you all for another video on the channel very soon. So until then friends, take care of yourselves and bye bye.